Hey there, welcome over here to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you 30, yes, I said 30 of my family's favorite meals. All of these recipes in this video hold a special place in my heart, so I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to be showing you instant pot recipes, casseroles, slow cooker recipes, one pot meals. You are going to get it all. But anyways, let's go get to cooking. We're getting started out today by making this street corn chicken and it is so, so good. In this medium bowl, I'm adding two cans of drained sweet corn, followed by a fourth a cup of mayonnaise and a fourth a cup of some sour cream. To give this plenty of flavor, I'm adding in a teaspoon of some chili powder and the juice from a half of a lime. Give this a really good stir. Over to my greased casserole dish, I'm just going to lay my three medium-sized chicken breasts right in there. You're going to want to season the chicken with a little bit of some garlic powder, salt, and pepper on each side. The next thing you're going to do is pour the corn mixture all over the top of the chicken breasts and then place this in a preheated oven to bake on 350 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes or until your chicken reaches 165 degrees internally. While I have the chicken cooking away in the oven, I'm going to be showing you how I make one of the side dishes, which is just some white rice. I love making it in the Instant Pot, so I'll show you how I do it. Just add a tablespoon of olive oil, two cups of white rice with two cups of water, and then I press the rice button, and it seriously comes out perfect every single time. So now that my chicken's completely cooked through, I'm just going to sprinkle some of this queso fresco cheese on top with cherry tomatoes, jalapenos, cilantro, and lime. Those are the top that I chose to um, top my chicken with, but you could top yours with whatever. And then of course I served it on a bed of some of the white rice we cooked in the Instant Pot. This came out so, so good. It had so much great flavor. I think you'd like this one. This zucchini squash chicken is so good. So I just added a pound of chicken into my pan. I have a couple tablespoons of hot olive oil in there. I'm seasoning it with garlic powder, onion powder, Italian seasoning, and a little salt and pepper. You're going to cook this chicken completely completely through. While it is cooking, I'm going to hop over to my cutting board and cut two zucchinis into smaller pieces along with two yellow squash. Now that we have our chicken completely cooked through, I'm removing it to a separate plate and I'm setting the plate to the side. In the same pan we cooked the chicken, I added an additional tablespoon of olive oil with the squash and the zucchini that we just cut up. And then you'll want to season it with plenty of some more garlic powder, onion powder, Italian seasoning, and salt and pepper. You're going to cook these squash and zucchini until they're soft, about five to six minutes. So now that they are soft, I added back in our chicken along with with the juice from half of a lemon, you're going to stir this around for a minute or so and then add in a fourth a cup of some grated Parmesan cheese. Once the cheese has melted down and everything is nicely combined together, this is ready to serve. I serve mine with a baked potato with sour cream, cheese, and crumbled up bacon. I also serve this with a side salad. This meal is delicious. I figured some of you guys might be growing zucchini and squash this summer in your gardens. So you might be looking for a recipe like this, but this one is 10 out of 10. I haven't made rigatoni in such a long time, so now we're making some homemade rigatoni. To begin, I'm just chopping up one onion into smaller pieces along with two zucchinis and two cups of cherry tomatoes. To my large pot with some hot olive oil in there, I added in our onion that's diced along with our pound of sausage. This is just the sweet Italian sausage. You could use hot sausage or any type of sausage you like. You just pretty much want a pound of it. Now that my sausage is cooked, I'm going to be adding a couple cloves of garlic and I'm going to stir this garlic around until it's fragrant. I also want to mention if you have a bunch of grease left over from your sausage, you do want to drain it. Mine was wasn't very greasy though, so I didn't need to bother with that. So now I'm going to be adding in my three tablespoons of tomato paste and stir this together to combine. Mm -hmm. 
Now you'll want to be adding in your sliced up cherry tomatoes. If you don't have cherry tomatoes on hand, you could just use a regular sized can of diced tomatoes and it will still turn out perfect. Next I added in one cup of chicken broth along with some salt and pepper. You're going to stir this all together and let it simmer on your stove for about 10 minutes covered. While I have that simmering, I'm going to boil up my 12 ounces of rigatoni noodles. You could use any type of noodles you like, but my family likes using rigatoni for this recipe. Now that our tomatoes are through simmering, I'm going to be adding in our zucchini that we chopped up earlier. I'm going to give this a good stir, and then this is going to simmer on my stove for an additional 5 minutes. After those five minutes are up, we're gonna be adding our drained rigatoni into our pot. And then I did reserve about half a cup of some of the pasta water that the noodles were boiling in to add to this. It's just going to make it a little bit more liquidy. And then I added in about three tablespoons of basil. Both of those steps are optional, but I just prefer it like that. Here is the finished product. This is so good. It has a ton of fresh tasting flavor. It really is Wonderful. My family loves this recipe, especially in the summertime when you have fresh zucchinis in your garden. Now we're making some Italian beef sandwiches, and I am not joking when I say you got to make these. These sandwiches are so, so good. So to get it started, in my crock pot, you're going to add a three pound chuck roast along with 14 ounces of some beef broth, a fourth a cup of some Worcestershire sauce, and then a fourth a cup of some low sodium soy sauce. You do want to make sure you use the low sodium soy sauce or else it might be a little bit too salty. A cup of some non-diet Coke. I know that might sound weird, but it's going to make the meat nice, tender, and flavorful. So for the seasonings, you're going to add about three tablespoons of some chopped onions, two teaspoons of oregano and garlic, a half a teaspoon of some Italian seasoning and thyme, and then some salt and pepper to your taste. The very last ingredient I'm adding in is just a fourth a cup of some pepperoncini juice. This is going to cook on low for about eight hours. Here's the roast eight hours later. My house was smelling so, so good. It is going to be very easy to shred because the roast is very tender at this point. So go ahead and shred it up into smaller pieces. Making this into a sandwich is so simple. So I have two hoagie rolls right here. Of course, this recipe makes way more than two sandwiches, but that's all my family needed on this night. I just added some of the Italian beef that I strained to one side of the hoagie rolls, put some sliced pepperoncini peppers on top with a couple slices of some provolone cheese, and this is going to go under my broiler for about three minutes. This is the finished product. I served my sandwich with a side salad and some of the juice that the meat was cooking in to dip the sandwich in. This was so, so good. My family loves this recipe. That meat has a ton of great flavor. Now we're making spaghetti and meatballs. This meatball recipe is hands down my all-time favorite meatball recipe ever. I definitely suggest you trying it. So to begin, in my large bowl, I have a pound of some ground beef to the ground beef. I added one diced up white onion. I made sure I diced the onion up very finely. It'll turn out better like that in the end. I also added a tablespoon of some minced garlic, a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese, and ricotta. The ricotta cheese might sound weird adding it in, but it adds great flavor flavor and texture. I also added in a half a cup of some breadcrumbs and a few tablespoons of fresh parsley and a little bit of some salt and pepper. If you don't have fresh parsley on hand, you could definitely skip that step. Lastly, I added in about three tablespoons of some milk. Just stir all of this together. I'm rolling my meatballs out into about golf ball sizes. That's the size my family likes. And then I'm placing them on my wire rack on my cooking tray. If you don't have a wire rack like this, you could just directly put them on your cooking tray. This will bake on 425 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. 
While I do have our meatballs in the oven baking, I'm just going to boil up our spaghetti noodles. I'm using a little under a pound of those. And then for the marinara sauce, of course, you could definitely make your own marinara sauce. I've done that many times before, but I was just feeling like using a jar of Prego on that night. Here's the finished product. I just topped my spaghetti and meatballs with some Parmesan cheese. These meatballs have the best rich flavor. They are just amazing. And I just can't even describe how delicious these meatballs are. Every time we have a family gathering, my family always asks me to make them. Now for the juiciest baked chicken recipe. I think you might like this one. I have one quart of some warm water right here. I'm adding a fourth a cup of some kosher salt in. I'm just going to whisk this all together. We're going to be brining the chicken if you don't know yet. The reason I am brining the chicken for this recipe, it's just really going to help tenderize it. If you don't have time to brine your chicken, you could definitely opt out of this point. But I just added my chicken breast into the water and I'm going to let this sit for 15 minutes. After my chicken was through with that, I just removed it to a cutting board, sliced the chicken horizontally in half. I'm just seasoning this on both sides with salt, pepper, oregano, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika. You could really use any type of seasonings that your family likes at this point. Just make sure you season on both sides. To prepare my baking dish, I'm going to drizzle about a half a tablespoon of some olive oil to the bottom and then add my chicken pieces in there. And then you're going to actually drizzle the chicken with a little bit more olive oil on top and then a tablespoon of some melted butter. This is really going to ensure that ch the chicken is really nice and juicy in the end. This bakes in a preheated oven to 450 for 15 to 18 minutes or until it's cooked through. I've been loving making my mashed potatoes in the Instant Pot recently, it's just really easy. So to my Instant Pot, I have four medium-sized russet potatoes. I place them on my Trevit with one cup of some water. I'm gonna put the Instant Pot on sealing and then put this on high pressure for 10 minutes with a three minute natural release. Here they are after cooking. I'm just going to remove the potatoes to a separate plate and remove all of the water at the bottom of the Instant Pot. After I added the potatoes back in my Instant Pot without the trivet, I added about two tablespoons of butter in and a third a cup of some milk. I'm just going to season it with some salt and pepper. I kept my potatoes pretty simple on this night because I was kind of in a rush. You're just going to mash these up and these potatoes are so, so creamy and soft in the end. This is my plate of food. After the chicken was out of the oven, I let it rest on a cutting board for about three to five minutes. I served this with with a side salad and this was a really good hearty meal. I can make these French onion smothered pork chops for weeks and probably not get tired of them. So now that's what we're making. I'm just going to begin by slicing my two yellow onions into rings or you could slice them into half moon shapes, kind of whatever your preference is. So now over to my saucepan, I just added two tablespoons of butter and I'm going to add a tablespoon of some olive oil along with the butter and I'm going to let this melt down and get hot. Once it is melted down and hot, I'm going to add my onions in. After sauteing those onions for about five minutes, I'm going to now be adding in a fourth a cup of some beef broth. I'm going to continue to cook these onions for an additional 12 to 15 minutes or until the onions are extremely tender and golden brown like this. So now I'm just going to remove them to a separate plate and set these onions to the side. After I added my four medium thick pork chops in, I'm going to season them with a little bit of thyme, garlic powder, salt, and pepper on each side. And these pork chops are only gonna cook for about three to four minutes on each side. I did flip them at the halfway point. Mm -hmm. 
After I removed our pork chops to a separate plate and set that plate to the side, I added back in our onions to the pan along with two and a half tablespoons of some all-purpose flour. I'm just going to stir the onions and flour together until the flour no longer looks white. And then you're gonna wanna add in one cup of some beef broth and then whisk this all together and let it simmer until this starts to thicken up. Now that my sauce is at the thickness that I like it to be, I'm just adding back in our cooked pork chops and I made sure to cover them in the sauce. I'm going to be adding five slices of some cheese all over the pork chops. I'm gonna place the lid on top for about a minute or two or until the cheese melts and this is the finished product. All I have to say about this meal is, oh dear, this meal is so good. I could eat these smothered pork chops all the time. Like I said before, they are that scrumptious. I just served these pork chops over some mashed potatoes with some steamed peas. This meal is just so amazing. This orzo lemon chicken brings me right back to the summer every single time I make it. In my large pot, I have a tablespoon of hot olive oil. I added my one pound of cubed chicken, just season it with a little bit of some salt and pepper and cook this chicken completely through. While it is cooking, I'm going to move over to my cutting board and cut up my one pound of asparagus into one inch pieces and go ahead and dice a half of an onion up as well. So now that my chicken's cooked, I'm just going to remove it to a separate plate and set this plate to the side. To the same large pot that we just cooked the chicken in, I'm going to be adding an additional tablespoon of some olive oil. Once it's hot, go ahead and add the onion that we just diced up in. Stir this around for about a minute or two until your onion softens. Once the onion has softened down, go ahead and add in your one cup of orzo along with a couple teaspoons of some minced garlic. Let this saute together for an additional minute or two. After you add in your tablespoon of Italian seasoning and two and one fourth cup of chicken broth, put your lid on and let this simmer for about five minutes. After it is through simmering, add your asparagus in, give this a really good stir, and then put the lid back on top and let this simmer for about five more minutes. After those five minutes, your orzo should look nice and fluffy like this and the asparagus should be cooked. I just added in three cups of fresh spinach. That is optional. You don't have to add that in if you don't care for spinach. And the juice from a half of a lemon. Also add the chicken that is cooked back in. Give this a really good stir and let the spinach wilt down and then it is ready to serve. Here's the finished product. I'm sure you could have guessed it, but I sprinkled the top with plenty of some Parmesan cheese. This came out so, so good. I really love how simple it is to throw it together. And like I said previously, this definitely reminds me of summer every single time I make it. Now we're making some broccoli, carrot, and beef lo mein. This has to be one of my all-time favorite lo mein recipes. It is just so simple to make. So after I cut my broccoli up into smaller pieces, I just set it to the side. And now I have about one pound of some flank steak. You want to cut the flank steak against the grain and you really do want to cut it as thin as possible. I always find when I cut my flank steak for these type of recipes super duper thin, it comes out best in the end. Now we're gonna begin on the sauce. This sauce makes this recipe so amazing. So in this bowl, I just added a fourth a cup of brown sugar, a fourth a cup of reduced sodium soy sauce, two tablespoons of hoisin sauce, and then about a fourth a teaspoon of some fresh ground ginger and a little shake of pepper. Whisk this all together. To this large pot of some boiling water, you're gonna wanna either add in eight ounces of lo mein noodles or spaghetti noodles. I use spaghetti noodles because that's what I have on hand. When those spaghetti noodles only had about five minutes left of cooking, I added in our cut up broccoli and I'm going to let the broccoli soften. Over to my Dutch oven, I have about two tablespoons of some hot olive oil in there. I just added my steak. I'm going to cook this steak completely through. I am cooking it on a higher heat just so it is nice and tender in the end. 
So now that my steak is cooked, I just added one cup of shredded carrots along with a few cloves of minced garlic. I'm going to cook this all together for about one to two minutes. A couple minutes later, now my garlic is fragrant and I just added in our drained spaghetti noodles and broccoli. I'm also adding in the sauce that we made up. I'm going to stir this all together and let the sauce thicken and let everything combine and then it is ready to serve. Here's my lo mein. I just served mine with some sesame seeds on top. When I say you really got to make this, I am not joking. It is so, so delicious. If you're not a steak fan, you could replace the steak with shrimp or chicken, whatever you care for. This meal is just so flavorful. This baked taquito recipe is such a great recipe, especially if you're in a rush. So to get it started, I have about five ounces of softened cream cheese I added to my bowl. And now I'm adding in a fourth a teaspoon of cumin, garlic powder, and some chili powder. The last couple ingredients you're gonna add for this sauce is three tablespoons of sour cream and a fourth a cup of whatever type of salsa that you like. You're just going to stir this mixture all together. Now that the sauce is well combined, you're gonna add in your two cups of shredded chicken. I just boiled my chicken up and shredded it that way, or you could use a rotisserie chicken, whatever you prefer. I added the chicken into the sauce and gave it a good stir. I'm going to set this to the side. To help my tortillas not crack so much in the end when I'm rolling them for the taquitos, I have a plate lined with a damp paper towel and then I added my corn tortillas to that. And then I'm going to add an additional damp paper towel to the top and put this in the microwave for about 40 seconds. I have my sheet pan right here lined with some aluminum foil and you're just going to spray it with some nonstick spray. I'm choosing to use avocado oil spray. Now to assemble these taquitos, you're going to grab one of your warm tortillas, fill it with a little bit of the chicken filling. You don't want to do too much or else it will come apart in the end. And you want to try to not crack them while you're rolling them. Of course, some of mine did crack though. The last thing you're gonna do is spray some additional oil spray on the tops so they crisp up in the end. These will bake on 425 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. Here's the finished product. I just served my taquitos with all of the fixings that I enjoy. These came out so, so good. I really love how simple they are to throw together on a really busy night and they taste delicious. Now we're making this creamy garlic chicken over some rice. To get this one started, I have two large chicken breasts right here. You're gonna wanna slice them horizontally through the center so it will appear as four chicken breasts. This will just help the chicken cook and add some more great flavor in the end. So now we're gonna season this up. The seasonings I'm using is just a little bit of some garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper on each side. Now over to my pan with a tablespoon of melted butter and melted olive oil. I'm just going to add my chicken in and cook it on both sides for about three to five minutes or until it's completely cooked through. Once it is cooked through, you're going to remove your chicken to a separate plate and set it to the side. To begin on the sauce, I'm going to add about two teaspoons of some minced garlic to my pan. Stir it around. Once the garlic is fragrant, you're going to add in your fourth a cup of some chicken broth and you're going to whisk this all together and let the chicken broth reduce down by half. Once reduced down, add in your one cup of some heavy whipping cream. Whisk this all together pretty frequently while simmering for about three minutes just to help this thicken up. Once the sauce starts to get thicker, I sprinkled some salt and pepper on top and then added a fourth a cup of some Parmesan cheese. Just whisk this together and let the Parmesan cheese get incorporated. To give this a little bit more pizzazz, I'm adding in two cups of some fresh baby spinach and a half of a lemon in. I'm going to let the spinach wilt down. Once it does wilt down, I'm going to add the chicken back in and let the chicken heat through and then it's ready to serve.
Here's my plate of food. I just served this with some steamed green beans and over a bed of some white rice. This came out so amazing. You could also serve this over some egg noodles and that would be just as delicious. Now we're making a classic chicken and broccoli casserole. To get this one started, I have my pan with one tablespoon of hot olive oil in it. Then I added a pound of cubed chicken breast. I'm just seasoning it with my favorite seasonings, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and paprika. I love using those seasonings for this recipe. Now at this point, you're just going to cook this chicken completely through. Once it's cooked, I just removed it from the stove. Now we're going to work on the creamy mixture. It just has a few simple ingredients. So in this medium sized bowl, I added one can of cream of chicken, fourth a cup of mayonnaise, a teaspoon of lemon juice, and then lastly, a fourth a cup of chicken broth. Whisk this all together. I do want to mention if you want to double this recipe, if you're feeding a little bit more people, you certainly can just use a larger baking dish to cook it in. After this mixture is well combined, I set it to the side. Now to begin on the breadcrumbs, I have a half a cup of breadcrumbs in this bowl. I use the Italian style breadcrumbs. I added two tablespoons of melted butter to them and I just mixed it all together. Over to my smaller casserole dish, or you can use an eight by eight baking dish. I added our cooked chicken along with one bag of some frozen defrosted broccoli, about 12 ounces. Mix this all together. After you mix the chicken and the broccoli together, add the creamy mixture and then mix everything to combine. The last couple things you'll do is add a cup and a half of some shredded sharp cheddar cheese on top. Then lastly, add the breadcrumb mixture that we made up, sprinkle it all over the top, and then bake this in a preheated oven to 350 degrees for about 25 minutes or until the cheese is nice and melty. Here's the finished product. This meal is so, so good. It has a ton of great flavor. It's beautifully creamy on the inside, and then the outside has that nice crunch from the breadcrumbs. My entire family loves it, and here's my little daughter, Brinley. She's just playing on the floor, waiting for me to serve her her plate of food. These baked quesadillas are definitely a go-to meal here in my home. We really love them. So to get them started, I'm just cooking up one pound of some ground beef in my pan, or you could use ground turkey, whatever your preference is. After my ground beef was through cooking, I drained out any excess grease, and now I'm going to be seasoning it with about a tablespoon and a half of some taco seasoning, and then I added a third a cup of some water. I'm just going to stir this mixture all together to combine. Over to my sheet pan, I have it lined with some parchment paper and then I just sprayed it with some avocado oil spray. You could use any type of tortilla you like for this recipe, but I just used the little street flour tortillas. Those are my favorite for this recipe. Anyways, I just put a little bit of some refried beans on the bottom of the tortillas. Next, you'll add a scoop of the taco mixture and then just a little bit of some Colby Jack cheese on top. You could add any other toppings you like inside of these quesadillas like jalapenos, seriously, anything you like, go ahead and add it in. I placed another tortilla on the very top and then sprayed it with some avocado oil spray. This will bake in a preheated oven to 450 degrees for about eight to 12 minutes or until the cheese is nice and melty and the top of the tortillas are crisp. Here's the finished product. I just served it with some salsa, sour cream, jalapenos, lime, and iceberg lettuce. I really love making these quesadillas because it kind of kicks the normal quesadillas up a notch and and it's just really fun and easy to make. My family enjoys it. Amazing Tuscan chicken and a sun-dried tomato sauce. It's very simple to throw together. So in my saucepan, I added a half a tablespoon of butter and olive oil. I let that melt down and get hot. And then I added my one cubed chicken breast and I'm going to season it with salt and pepper and let it cook completely through. Once it is cooked through, I just removed it to a separate plate and I set this plate to the side. Now into the same pan, we're going to begin on the sauce now. So I'm adding an additional tablespoon of some olive oil with a few cloves of some minced garlic and I'm going to let the garlic get fragrant. Now you'll want to add in your one cup of some chicken broth, let it simmer and reduce down for a couple of minutes. Then add your one cup of some heavy whipping cream in, stir it all to combine and let this simmer for an additional three to four minutes. 
If you know me, you know how much I love cheese, so now I'm going to be adding in a half a cup of mozzarella and a fourth a cup of some Parmesan. I did want the sauce a little bit thicker, so I did end up adding in a quick cornstarch slurry, which was just a tablespoon of cornstarch and a tablespoon of water mixed together. As you see, the sauce is thickening up really nicely at this point. So now for the sun-dried tomatoes, I'm using this brand, and I added a third a cup of those in. Next, I'm adding about three cups of fresh spinach in, just stir this all together and let the spinach wilt down. After I added my chicken back in, I let it warm through in the sauce. I do want to let you know I've doubled the amount of chicken and even tripled the amount of chicken in this recipe in the past, and of course it still turns out amazing. I just only had one chicken breast left on hand on that particular night, so that's why I only used one. But I just served this over the top of some egg noodles, and this is hands down one of my all-time favorite Tuscan chicken recipes. It just has amazing flavor. You could never go wrong with an Italian sausage pasta night, so that's what we're making in my Dutch oven. I have a tablespoon of hot olive oil. I'm adding one pound of some mild Italian sausage to it. I'm just removing the casings right now. You could use any type of sausage you like for this recipe though. After I am through adding my sausage in, I'm just going to cook it completely through. While our sausage is cooking, I'm going to boil up our 12 ounces of noodles right here in this pot. You could use any type of noodle you like. Once your sausage is cooked, you're gonna to wanna to remove any of the excess grease and then add a couple cloves of minced garlic, one diced up white onion, and you're gonna cook this for about two minutes. After those two minutes of cooking, you're gonna add about 28 ounces of some Italian style petite diced tomatoes, and then a cup and a half of some heavy whipping cream. Stir this together and let it simmer on your stove for about five minutes. This part is optional, but I am adding in about two cups of some fresh chopped spinach. I'm going to let the spinach wilt down and then add in our noodles that we cooked and drained. Give it one last good stir and then it's ready to serve. Here's the finished product. Of course, I just sprinkled it with some fresh basil and Parmesan cheese on top. I served it alongside of a side salad. This pasta dish was super duper flavorsome and it did make for some great leftovers for the next day. One of my favorite pasta dishes, you know how much I love pasta. I have two medium to large sized chicken breasts right here and one smaller one. I'm just cutting them in half. Of course, with this recipe, you could use more chicken or less chicken just depending on what you need. I put them into a large gallon size Ziploc bag and I'm just tenderizing them with my meat mallet, just banging them so they're pretty much even in size. I'm going to season my chicken on both sides with some salt and pepper and then over to this bowl I'm adding a half a cup of some regular milk and then back to this plate I'm adding a half a cup of Italian style breadcrumbs. To coat the chicken you're going to first dip it in the milk and then over to the breadcrumbs and then place it on a separate plate. It really can't get any easier than that. To cook our chicken up, I have a tablespoon of butter in my saucepan, and now I'm just adding a tablespoon of some olive oil. Once that melts down, you're gonna add your chicken pieces in. This chicken's gonna cook for about three to six minutes on each side. I only flipped it once halfway through cooking. After my chicken was through cooking, I just removed it to a separate plate, and then you are gonna wanna keep your chicken warm while you make the sauce. So I just placed my chicken in the oven on the warm setting. 
To begin on the sauce, I have a half a cup of some chicken broth I added to my saucepan, and I'm just scraping all the bits off of the bottom of my pan. There's gonna be a lot of flavor in those bits. Once I brought that up to a simmer, I added in my two teaspoons of minced garlic, and then you're gonna add in your one cup of some heavy whipping cream, and you're going to stir this around and bring it up to a simmer and let this thicken. Once it does start to thicken up, you're gonna add in your third cup of some Parmesan cheese, and your fourth a cup of fresh basil. I just cut the basil up into smaller pieces. I also added a shake of some pepper. You're gonna stir this around and once it's thick, your sauce is ready to serve. Here's the finished product. This came out so, so good. I just served it over a bed of some fettuccine noodles. This would also pair great with some white rice if you don't wanna do noodles. This is such a yummy meal. The sauce has so much flavor and that chicken is delicious. This amazing veggie packed chicken stir fry. To begin, I'm just going to chop up my one red bell pepper, three medium carrots, and two smaller heads of broccoli. I'm going to set the veggies to the side now into my large pot. I have a couple tablespoons of some hot olive oil in there. I added my one chicken breast that I cubed and I'm just seasoning it with salt and pepper. You're just going to cook this chicken completely through. While I do have our chicken cooking up, I'm going to begin on the stir fry sauce. So in this smaller bowl, I have two tablespoons of water and a tablespoon of cornstarch. I whisked that together. Now I'm adding in our fourth a cup of some chicken broth, three tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce. After that, you'll add in your fourth a cup of honey and about a half a teaspoon of some crushed red pepper flakes. Of course, add more crushed red pepper in if you want it a little bit spicy. Whisk this mixture up and then set it to the side. Now that my chicken has reached the internal temperature of 165 degrees, it is completely cooked through, so I'm just removing it to a separate plate. Now into my same large pot, I'm adding all of the veggies that we chopped up in. You're also gonna wanna add your tablespoon of minced garlic and about half a tablespoon of some minced ginger. Stir everything to combine and let these veggies soften for about four to five minutes. The stir fry recipe truly cannot get any easier than this. Now that my veggies are at the tenderness that I like them to be, I added back in our cooked chicken along with the stir fry sauce. I'm going to stir everything to combine and let the sauce thicken up. Once it is thicker like this, it is ready to serve. I served my chicken stir fry over a bed of some white rice and sprinkled some sesame seeds on top. Like I just said, this stir fry recipe is so easy to throw together and it has some amazing rich flavor. I've showed this baked chicken parm recipe on my channel previously, but it is so good. I'm going to show it again. To begin, I have two chicken breasts right here. As usual, use more or less depending on your preference. I'm just slicing them in half horizontally. I added my chicken to this gallon sized Ziploc bag and now I'm going to bang it with my meat mallet until it's even in size. This is just going to help tenderize the chicken. If you don't have time for this step, you could definitely skip it. I've skipped this step before and it still turns out delicious. Now we're gonna work on the coating for this chicken. So I'm just adding one egg to this bowl and I'm going to whisk it up. To this other plate, I'm going to be adding one cup of Italian style panko breadcrumbs, or you could use regular breadcrumbs, but we just prefer the Italian style. It just has more flavor. And then I'm adding a fourth a cup of some grated Parmesan cheese and about a half a teaspoon of some oregano and a half a teaspoon of some onion powder. I'm going to stir this together. After I lined my large cooking tray with some aluminum foil, I'm just going to spray it with plenty of some nonstick spray. Over to my chicken, I'm going to season our chicken with some salt and pepper on each side. And now I'm going to bring it over to the egg wash, put it in the egg wash on both sides, and then bring it over to the panko breadcrumb mixture. I'm going to make sure that it gets nice and coated. I'm going to kind of press it into the panko mixture and then bring it over to the cooking tray. I did this with all of my chicken.
This will go into a preheated oven to 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. While that's in the oven baking, I'm going to boil up my one pound of spaghetti noodles and then warm up my marinara sauce. I'm just choosing to use this Prego marinara sauce. I used about half of the container, but per usual, just use however much you think you need. After those 15 minutes of baking, I pulled my chicken out of the oven. It wasn't completely cooked through yet, so I just flipped it and put it back into the oven for an additional five minutes to bake. Now that my chicken is all cooked through and reached 165 degrees internally, I just took some of that marinara sauce and I'm pouring it on top of my chicken and then I'm going to cover it in some mozzarella cheese. This is going to go back in the oven under the broiler for about two to three minutes or until it is nice and bubbly. Here is the finished product. My family loves this chicken parm recipe, especially because you don't have to fry it. It just goes in the oven to bake. It's pretty simple to throw together. I just served it with a side salad and we enjoyed this meal. I'm making this feta pasta dish. It is viral all over the internet right now, so I wanted to give it a try myself. This is kind of like my variation of it. So in an oven safe baking dish, I added 18 ounces of cherry tomatoes, orange and red, a half a cup of olive oil for the seasonings. You're going to add a half a teaspoon of basil, oregano, salt, and then a fourth a teaspoon of pepper. You do want to make sure you add all of the seasonings in because it's just going to add a ton of great flavor. After you coat the tomatoes in the oil and the seasonings, you're going to add a block of feta cheese right in the center. This is eight ounces of feta cheese. And now you see me coating the feta in the oil and seasonings as well. I'm just tossing it in it like that. For the garlic, I'm adding about five to six cloves of garlic. I didn't peel them or anything like that just because after you pull them out of the oven, they'll be easy to peel. This bakes on 350 for about 35 minutes. While that's in the oven baking, you're gonna go ahead and boil up your eight ounces of pasta noodles. I'm using this type of pasta noodle. Also, be sure after your noodles are cooked to reserve about three-fourths cup of the water for a little bit later. Now that our feta and tomatoes are through cooking in the oven, you're gonna remove the garlic and you're going to peel them. It is going to be a little bit hot, so be careful, but since the garlic is nice and roasted, the peel will come off super easy. This recipe truly is a really simple one. Now I'm adding in my third cup of fresh basil that I just cut into smaller pieces. And with a fork, I am just going to squish the feta cheese, squish the cherry tomatoes, and combine everything together. It's going to create a nice creamy sauce. With the 3 fourths cup of pasta water that we reserved, I just added it in at this point and, you know, mixed everything to combine. The very last thing you're going to do is add your drained pasta noodles, stir everything together, and then it is ready to serve. Here's the finished product. This meatless meal came out unbelievably good. My entire family liked it. And if you're a feta cheese lover, I really do think you would enjoy this recipe. It has a ton of great flavor. I just sprinkled some Parmesan cheese on top. For this meal, we're just making some creamy chicken pesto pasta, and this one is so, so yummy. So to begin, I have some olive oil, about a tablespoon in my saucepan right here, and then I'm adding my pound of some chicken. I did cut this chicken up into cubes, and I'm just seasoning it with a little bit of some salt, pepper, and Italian seasoning, and you're just going to cook this up. Now that my chicken is completely cooked, I just put it on this separate plate and set it aside while I begin to work on my sauce. 
To my saucepan, I just added two tablespoons of butter and I let that melt down. And then I'm adding about two and a half tablespoons of some flour and I just whisk this all together. You want to be careful because flour does burn quickly once it is in the pan. Next, once that flour and the butter is incorporated and it begins to brown, I added in my two cloves of garlic followed by my chicken broth, which was just one cup, and then my one cup of milk and I just whisk this all together. I just let it simmer and start to get thick enough. Once it was a little bit thicker, I added in my mozzarella cheese, which was just three quarters cup, and then my half a cup of grated Parmesan, and then my half a cup of some fresh basil pesto, or you could add more if you like more pesto. And then I just whisked this all together along with the chicken, and then your sauce is pretty much complete once everything is melted. To my cooked penne pasta, I just added in our creamy pesto sauce and I mixed this together. If you're wondering how much pasta I used, I just used about a half a pound of uncooked pasta, which is the equivalent to two and a half cups. Here is my bowl all plated up. I just sprinkled it with some Parmesan cheese and some parsley. This came out so, so good. This was actually also one of my favorite meals out of the entire week. It just had so much flavor and I kind of forgot how much I love pesto. I do wanna show you this really simple chili recipe. So to my saucepan, I added a tablespoon of olive oil and I let that olive oil get hot. And then I added one diced up onion along with one stick of celery that I chopped up. And then I kind of stirred this all together. And next I'm going to be adding in one pound of some lean ground beef. You could also be adding in a bell pepper or two at this point if you like bell peppers. Unfortunately, I didn't have any bell peppers on hand so I just opted out of that. But like I said, go ahead and add your bell pepper in. It will add great flavor. So I just cooked these together until that ground beef was nice and cooked through and now I'm just adding a tablespoon of some chili powder and I'm going to stir this all together just so everything is coated in that chili powder. Moving over to my crock pot, I just dumped that mixture right in. Now it's ready to go. And now we're going to be adding the rest of our ingredients, which is one can of kidney beans. I did drain and rinse these kidney beans. And then one can of mixed chili beans. You're not gonna wanna drain or rinse these chili beans. These are also about 15 ounce cans if you were wondering. The chili beans are gonna add a lot of flavor. And now I'm adding in two 14 and a half ounce cans of some diced tomatoes. I do prefer the petite diced tomatoes but I didn't have any so I just added the normal diced tomatoes and then I added one eight ounce can of tomato sauce and then I added two tablespoons of chili powder two tablespoons of cumin one tablespoon of onion powder one tablespoon of brown sugar a half a tablespoon of garlic powder and a half a tablespoon of some salt yes that is a lot of seasonings but you don't want a bland chili you want it to have a lot of flavor so I just stirred this all together. I just plopped the lid right on top of this and I cooked mine on low for about four hours. Here is my chili in the bowl. This came out really good. I just topped mine with some chips and some sour cream and cheese just because those are the toppings I had on hand. But this was a great chili recipe and it's making me excited for Halloween and all the holidays to come. Now I'm showing you this instant pot creamy chicken noodle soup, but it's better than chicken noodle soup in my opinion. So I'm just starting out by dicing up three carrots into smaller pieces. I did peel these carrots first. You just want them in little tiny cubes just like this. You could also use two ribs of celery for this recipe. Unfortunately, my store was all out of celery, so I just opted out of that and I just diced up an onion instead. So here I am just dicing up one medium size yellow onion into smaller pieces. Over here at my Instant Pot, I have one pound of chicken breast. This is a frozen chicken breast. I just forgot to get it out in time. The great thing about the Instant Pot is you could put frozen chicken in there and it will come out great. I added in our carrots, our onion, and a cup of frozen spinach, along with my four cups of chicken broth. 
To add some flavor to the soup, I'm just adding in a teaspoon of parsley, a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of thyme, a fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder, and then an eighth of a teaspoon of some black pepper, and then I just stirred this to the best of my ability. I just put the lid on this and set it to ceiling. You always want this little lever set to the ceiling button. I put this on high pressure for about 18 minutes because I had a frozen chicken breast. If your chicken is not frozen, put it on for about 15 minutes. I also did a quick release for this. If you don't know what a quick release is, it is just turning the lever on top as soon as the timer goes off to vent. So that's what a quick release is. Now I'm just shredding up the chicken with my little shredder gadget here. Now you're gonna want your Instant Pot on saute mode at this point and you're gonna add back in your shredded chicken followed by a cup of this orzo and you're gonna wanna just stir this all together until your orzo gets totally cooked the way you like your pasta to be cooked. It took me about eight minutes. While our pasta is cooking, we're gonna be making a cornstarch slurry. So all my cornstarch slurry is right now is a cup of milk along with two tablespoons of cornstarch and you're just going to whisk this together so it's not lumpy. Now that we have our orzo completely cooked, I added in our cornstarch slurry and I just mixed this all together until it was at the thickness that I like my soup to be. We really like our soup a little bit thicker in this house so I let this simmer for a little while longer, about 10 more minutes. Here is my bowl of soup. I just sprinkled it on top with some sharp cheddar cheese and some parsley flakes. This came out so, so delicious. It is a great recipe for fall. Fall is upon us this year. Anyways, my daughter Brinley loved the carrots and the chicken out of this. Now we're making some super simple, but this is so, so delicious still. It's just some Parmesan crusted chicken. So I have two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast that I just sliced thinly like this. And then I brought it over to a gallon size bag and I just beat it with my meat mallet. So it was all even in size and a little bit thinner. Now we're gonna be working on the egg wash. All it is is a one egg and a tablespoon of some water. I just whisked that all together and now I'm adding in a little bit of some minced garlic and then some salt and pepper and I whisked that once again. This step couldn't get any easier. All it is is two cups of some Parmesan cheese I poured into that bowl and now we're gonna begin on dredging it. So I just dipped it into the egg wash. So it was thoroughly coated in that and then I brought it over to that Parmesan mixture and I made sure I really did press down to get a lot of Parmesan on top of my chicken breast because we want all the flavor we could get and I just did that over and over again. Over here to my saucepan, I have it on medium high heat and I'm just melting two and a half tablespoons of some butter along with a tablespoon and a half of some olive oil. I just carefully put our chicken breast in there and then I let it cook on each side for about three minutes and I only flipped it once. You wanna make sure you just try to only flip it once just so the coating stays on and it gets nice and crisp. Here is my plate. This came out really super delicious. I was really impressed with how flavorful that chicken was, but yet it was just really simple to make. I just made some mashed potatoes and peas on the side. And then here is my silly little family. I also sprinkled some parsley flakes on top just to make it extra pretty. And then here's Brinley. She loved the mashed potatoes. 
For this meal I'm showing you, we're just making some super simple beef empanadas. So to begin, I'm just cooking up a pound of some ground beef to season it. I'm just using some taco seasoning. This original recipe calls for a bell pepper and a white onion in there to cook with it, but my store actually does, doesn't have any onion right now because there's a recall so let me know if you don't have any onion in your stores but anyways like I said before I just seasoned it with some taco seasoning once it was browned now that our ground beef is completely cooked we're gonna start making our empanadas so right here I have the great value pie crust this is just two nine inch round pie crust and I just rolled these out and then you're gonna make them into whatever shape you kind of want to. So you can make them huge empanadas or super small. I just have my cup and a half measuring cup that I am just making into circles right here. Now I'm gonna start filling our empanadas. So I just gave them a little scoop of that ground beef mixture and then some cheese. I just used some sharp cheddar cheese, but Colby Jack would also be yummy. And then I'm just pressing down the edges with a fork just to make sure none of, you know, the filling comes out. And then you're gonna brush an egg wash on top. It's just one egg scrambled and you're just going to brush it on and then stick it into your oven. Here are my empanadas all plated up. These came out perfect. It was one of our favorite recipes this week. But the only thing I would do differently next time is I'd roll out the pie crust before putting the filling in just so it's a little bit thinner. Now we're making one of my all-time favorites, coconut curry. If you've never had it before, it really is pretty good. I think you'll like it. So I'm just starting out by chopping up some ginger along with garlic, half of an onion, and one red bell pepper. To my Dutch oven, I have about a tablespoon of olive oil I let get hot, and then I added our onion in there, and you're going to let this onion get soft. Now that it is soft, you're going to be mincing your garlic in there and adding your ginger. Now that our garlic is nice and fragrant, we're going to be adding in our spices. So I'm adding in two teaspoons of some coriander. I didn't have coriander on hand. That's something I had to pick up from the store, but it was definitely worth it. It really has great flavor. And then I added in our two teaspoons of curry powder along with about two tablespoons of this red curry paste. On a medium heat, you're just going to stir all of these spices together and you're going to do this for about a minute or so until that red begins to become a deeper red. And now you're going to be adding in your pound of diced up chicken. You could either use chicken breast or chicken thighs. I chose to use breast. And then you're also going to be adding in your red bell pepper at this point. And you're going to cook your chicken almost completely through, about 75% cooked. You're gonna see that, why I'm doing that in a minute. Now you're gonna be adding in one can of some coconut milk along with your half of a lime. You'll also wanna add in one tablespoon of some brown sugar along with two tablespoons of some cilantro. The cilantro is definitely optional, but it does add great flavor. 
So you're going to simmer this all together with the lid off until your sauce begins to thicken and you do want your chicken to cook completely through at this point. While that was cooking, I just started on my naan. I typically make my own homemade naan, but I decided to buy it at the store. I just bought this brand just because it's quite a bit easier than making your own homemade naan. I just poured a little bit of some olive oil on mine and then sprinkled it with some parsley. Nothing too crazy. I didn't want it to make it too crazy on this night, but this was just really good. I just stuck it into the oven to bake. Here's the consistency of your curry when it is all cooked through and finished. Here is my plate. Of course, I just served it with some naan, some lime on top, and some more cilantro over some white sticky rice. This was amazing. Probably one of my favorite meals of all time. It just has some great flavor. Now we're making a sun-dried tomato creamy ravioli. This one's a really simple recipe and it has great flavor. So to get this one started, I'm just dicing up a fourth a cup of some sun-dried tomatoes. After I diced those up into some smaller pieces, I added them to a bowl, and I'm going to be adding some tomato paste to this. If you're wondering what I'm making at this point, it's kind of like a sun-dried tomato paste. So that's essentially what it is. You could buy sun-dried tomato paste at the store, but making it at home is just a little bit cheaper. So I just mixed that together. Now to my Dutch oven, I added two tablespoons of butter. Once that melted down, I added my four cloves of garlic, stirred that around and let it get fragrant. To my pot of boiling water, I'm just adding our chicken raviolis in there. You could use any type of raviolis you like or any type of pasta, just get that boiling up. Now back over to our garlic, I'm just going to be adding in two tablespoons of some flour and I'm going to whisk this together and get it incorporated. Once your flour starts to get a little bit golden in color, you're going to be adding your sun-dried tomato paste in there, and you're just going to mix this together for about a minute, and then from there you're going to be adding in your half a cup of chicken broth, then you're going to incorporate everything together. This recipe truly couldn't get any easier. I'm just adding in my one cup of heavy whipping cream. I'm going to whisk it all together. And then I'm going to be adding in my third a cup of Parmesan cheese along with fourth a cup of mozzarella cheese. Again, whisk it together. And once it begins to thicken and the cheese melts down, your sauce is ready to serve. Here is my bowl of ravioli. This came out super duper good. That pasta sauce has such a nice rich flavor. I also served this with a side salad. This was just a wonderful dinner. Just making some instant pot white chicken chili. I actually showed this recipe previously on one of my what's for dinner videos, but it's just that good. I wanted to share it again. So to my instant pot, I have my wire trivet in there. And then I added a cup of water followed by my two frozen chicken breasts. You could also just use non-frozen chicken breasts. That will work fine. I just seasoned it with a little bit of some salt and pepper. And then here's Brinley. She was being super goofy while I was filming all of these recipes. So you'll see quite a bit of her in this video. Anyways, I just plopped the top on and cooked this on high pressure for about 20 minutes. Just remember, if you don't have frozen chicken breasts, just lower your cooking time to about 12 minutes anyways once they were cooked I just shredded it with two forks. Now I'm adding in my four ounces of cream cheese. I did cut these down into smaller blocks just so that they melt down a little bit easier. Now I'm adding in my can of drained and rinsed white beans along with pinto beans and next you're going to be adding in your can of creamed corn. 
followed by your water. This is just two cups of water and then your cup of salsa. And then for the ranch dressing, I know this is such a weird part, but you're adding in a third cup of some creamy ranch dressing. This will make this recipe super duper delicious and a little bit more flavorful than other recipes. Anyways, now I'm adding a little sprinkle of cayenne pepper and then some onion powder. And then you're just going to mix this all up with some chili powder. One last thing I don't want to forget to mention is I also added in a fourth a cup of some milk. You could just add in some heavy cream if that's what you prefer. Then I set it on high pressure for 20 minutes with a quick release. Here we are about 20 minutes later. You do want to make sure that you whisk everything together because your blocks of cream cheese will still be blocks. But trust me, just whisk it together and it will turn out perfect. And then here's my big bowl of soup. This is such a good recipe. It's honestly one of my favorites. I just love it and everybody in my family devours it. Now we're gonna be making some pot roast. This is actually my favorite pot roast recipe ever. My mom made it like this while I was growing up. But into my crock pot, I'm adding my three and a half pound beef roast in there. And then on top of that, I'm gonna be adding a cup and a half of water. Then we're gonna to begin to season it up. So you're gonna to wanna to season it with one packet of some Italian dressing mix. This is just the powder mix. And then one packet of this brown gravy mix. I use the reduced sodium one, but you could just use the normal one. And then I'm gonna be adding in one packet of some ranch dressing mix, or you could add about a tablespoon in a half of that. I just cooked this on low for about four hours and then four hours later you're going to be adding in your veggies. So the veggies I'm adding in is just some peeled and diced russet potatoes along with some carrots and onions and then you're going to cook this for another two to three hours until all of your veggies are cooked and your beef starts to pull apart. Here is our pot roast. This came out super yummy. I just served it with a little croissant roll on the side and I just sprinkled some salt and pepper on top for some added flavor. This came out super yummy and like I said before, it's my favorite pot roast recipe. Now we're making some crock pot cracked out chicken. This is one of those comfort food types of meals. This is my opinion, of course, but I think this is comfort food. Anyways, to my crock pot, I just sprayed it with some nonstick spray, and then I added two medium-sized chicken breasts in there with a half a cup of some chicken broth. And directly on top of that, I'm just adding one packet of some cream cheese. I did cube this cream cheese just so it melts down a little bit better. And now I'm just adding a couple tablespoons of this ranch seasoning mix and that's seriously it. You're just going to put your lid on and cook this on low for about six hours. Here we are about six hours later and our chicken reached the internal temperature of 165 degrees. I'm just shredding up the chicken to the best of my ability with my little meat matcher right here. You could shred it up with two forks or an electric mixer, just whatever you like to shred your chicken with. Then I added one cup of sharp cheddar cheese and I did cook up about seven pieces of bacon on the stove and then I crumbled it. So I added most of that bacon in there and now I'm just stirring this all together and I'm gonna cook this on low for an additional 20 minutes. Here is my dinner. I just served mine on a bed of white rice, but I've tried this with egg noodles or in a hamburger bun, and it's great anyway. I also served it with black pepper and parsley on top. This is an amazing dinner. Now we're making some easy queso chicken tacos. If you're not a huge fan of queso, I do still think you might like this recipe because I'm not a big fan of queso and I love this recipe. So to get it started, I sprayed my crock pot with some nonstick spray and then I added in two chicken breasts followed by a half a packet of some taco seasoning. And then I added in one can of some Rotel along with one can of these diced up mild green chilies. You could add more or less green chilies. My family just loves green chili. And now you're gonna add half of a container of queso. I just added the salsa queso because that's what I found at my store. 
I went ahead and added a half a cup of some water to this, or you could add a half a cup of chicken broth, whatever your preference is. I gave this a really good stir, and then I cooked this on low for about six to eight hours, or you could cook this on high for about four hours. After this was through cooking, I just shredded it up with my KitchenAid hand mixer, or you could shred your chicken up with two forks or a meat masher. However you wanna shred your chicken, shred it up right now, and then it is ready to serve. Here are my tacos. I just served mine with some sour cream, cheese, cilantro, and tomato. These came out really, really good. Like I said previously, even if you're not a big queso fan, I do think you would love this recipe still. Now we're making some Cajun chicken pasta and oh my goodness gracious, this recipe is just really good. So to my Dutch oven, I've melted down a tablespoon of butter and added a tablespoon of olive oil. I let that get hot and then I added in our diced up white onion along with one pound of chicken breast. And now I'm adding my two teaspoons of Cajun seasoning. You could add in more or less depending on your taste. And we're gonna cook this up together. I do wanna mention if you are a huge bell pepper fan go ahead and add in a bell pepper at this point now that we have our chicken completely cooked I'm just adding in our four ounces of softened cream cheese I did cube this cream cheese just so it melts down better and I'm just going to stir it in with the chicken and let it melt down Now I'm just adding in my cup of milk. I am doing this slowly just so it gets incorporated with the rest of the ingredients better. I brought this up to a simmer and now I'm just adding in about 3 fourths cup of some Parmesan cheese. You're gonna stir this all together and let that melt down. I do wanna let you know you could add in more Cajun seasoning at this point and some salt and pepper if you want it extra flavorful. Anyways, I just whisked this together and now you're gonna be adding in your pasta. I'm just adding in about eight ounces of pasta all together. Here is my plate of pasta. This really did come out so delicious. This is kind of like a warm, cozy winter meal, in my opinion. I just love creamy pasta. I just served it with a side salad and some garlic bread. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you subscribe down below the video so you don't miss my next one, and I'll see you there. Bye for now.